you all for making us feel so welcome. Oh, well, it was our pleasure. In fact, I'd like to repay your kindness. I would love to have all of you over to our house for dinner tomorrow night. All of us? Dinner? Tomorrow? Oh, we would love to. We can't. We can't. Well, I've never had such a poor response to one of my dinner parties before. If they don't want to come, Ivy, that's their prerogative. Let's go. Grace, you were the only one who said yes. Well, I just thought it was very kind of you to invite us all for dinner. <laughs> well, your husband doesn't seem to agree. Why is that, Sam? Why is your wife the only one who wants to come to dinner? Why Grace accepted your dinner invitation, Ivy. And that reason is? My wonderful wife here simply is too good-hearted to say no to anyone. Oh, Sam. So Grace, it's true. So Grace only accepted out of politeness. No, I was saying that my wife here is a giving person who has a tendency to take on too much. I'm always asking you to slow down, Grace. Slow down. Take it easy. I can vouch for that. I mean, you're taking care of your, your shop and your family and the bed and breakfast. And you organize this flea market for the police benefit almost single-handedly. Well, I have to apologize for that, Grace. As your co-chair, I should have helped more. Oh, no, Ivy, I know that you're a very busy woman. And so are you, Grace. I think what you should do tomorrow night is relax. Take it easy, put your feet up. All the more reason to come to dinner at my house. I mean, why cook when my chef can prepare a lavish spread and you won't have to lift a finger? And there's no dishes. Oh, that does sound wonderful. Grace, remember, there's charity. We really need to be there for her. That's right. Um, my niece is in the hospital. Yes, I, I read about the fire in the paper. She doesn't even know yet that she's lost her mother, my sister. It's awful. But surely she must be getting very good care at the hospital. Absolutely, she is. Eve here is her doctor. And uh, I'm on 24-hour call, so it makes it very difficult to, to socialize. Surely we can work dinner into all of our busy schedules? Ivy, obviously, the Bennets and the Russells have other things to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you sound like such busy people leading such interesting lives. Mm. But surely, we can all still be friends, can't we? about the toll my schedule takes on me. Oh, darling, I'd feel guilty having you stay home with you. have so many worthy causes that need that skill and expertise that only you can bring. Oh, the sacrifices you make for me. <laughs> the sacrifices we all make. All the more reason we should put our responsibility away for a few hours and have dinner. And relax. We deserve it. Okay, the thing is that we have to get up early, Eve and I. Eve has to get to the hospital, and I have to get to team practice. I understand. We're all busy people leading busy lives. So there's only one solution. Perhaps another time. Let's go, Ivy. We'll just have dinner early. Ivy. Well, that will give Eve and Julian more time to discuss the new children's wing at the hospital. The new children's wing? What wing? A new wing at the hospital. Yes, a children's wing. I know of no such wing. Oh, I'm sure I mentioned it to you. No. Oh, it must have slipped my mind. We donated it. Mm. Entire wing. Mm. Imagine. <laughs> Julian and I like to give back to the community. And I'm sure the hospital could use a new pediatrics wing, couldn't it? Oh, absolutely. As space is so limited right now, and the physical therapy section is just desperate for new equipment. And I do volunteer work for the children. I mean, they really could use a bigger play area. Well, the two of you really should discuss this with Julian. But we're all so busy. Are you sure I can't change your mind about dinner tomorrow night? It's the perfect opportunity for you to give Julian your input on the new wing. Of course we will be there, Ivy. Eve? On oh, a new pediatrics wing. That's such a good cause. I promise we'll make it an early evening, TC. Grace. Good. It's all settled. Dinner tomorrow night. It'll be such fun. <laughs> and I'll bring my tomato soup cake. That really? That really isn't necessary. Oh, no, I'd, I'd love to. It's my own recipe. Well, then, I'm sure it's wonderful. <laughs> Ivy, we really must go. Our, our other engagement. Oh, of course, darling. We'll see you all tomorrow night. 
I've had such fun. It's been a lovely evening. I can't wait to get to know you all better. I want to know what in the world that was all about. Just drop it, Julian. You're giving me a migraine. You never want to go to these town functions? You claim they bore you? Tonight, I can't get you to leave. Pour me one of those. Make it a double. And why all the sudden interest in local handicrafts? I mean, you, a woman who won't sleep on anything less than Italian sheets that cost more than these locals make in a month, suddenly inexplicably ooing and awing over some scratchy, tacky cover that Grace Bennett showed you. Afghans. They're called Afghans. Well, whatever. I mean, you'd think they were 15th century Italian tapestries, the way you were going on about them. I thought they showed a talent and a keen eye for detail. Oh, I see. And I suppose after you taste Grace's uh, tomato soup cake, you'll be calling her a culinary genius, hmm? What are you up to? I am up to right about here with your rantings. You know, if I've learned anything in the years of our sham of a marriage, I've learned one thing about you. Everything you do has a purpose. What is it this time? I don't know what you're talking about. And why did you invite the Bennets and the Russells to dinner? I want to get to know them better. Don't lie to me, Ivy, the truth. What is this dinner tomorrow night really about? I invited the Russells and the Bennets to dinner to enhance the crane image in harmony. Since when do you give a damn about the crane image? You hate this family. Hmm. But Ethan will be head of the family one day. Oh, yes. And you want the little people to have a, a favorable impression of him. Blah, blah, blah. I've heard it all before and I'm not buying it this time. There must be something else you're hoping to get out of this dinner. Now, what is it? I told you. And I don't believe you. All right. You can just call off this dinner. I'm not in the mood to wine and dine these locals, especially our arrogant chief of police, Mr. Sam Bennett. Well, then get in the mood. Because we are having this dinner whether you like it or not. That's fine, but you owe me. Oh, no. I paid my debt to you and your father years ago. You're in a mood. I'll be in my study. <laughs>